So audio only podcast this week. Last thing I'd want is CBS to cut off the last minute of my video. Sunday night's Billy Joel snafu was both inexcusable and completely predictable. It's a symptom of our current media landscape and should serve as a warning to the big business side of podcasting. And now a look at what's trending in the podcast world and how it can help your show. It's the Jack Show podcast. If you're not familiar, after weeks of promotion, CBS cut away from the last minute or two of their Billy Joel concert special, his 100th sold-out show of a monthly residency at Madison Square Garden. It was going to be a huge night for the Tiffany Network. Few television moments carry the eyeballs and ad revenue like live sports. And the Masters Golf Tournament is one of the biggest examples outside, of course, the NFL. CBS was to use this lead-in for its signature show, 60 Minutes, and then use that lead-in for Random Cop Drama number 781 before getting into The Entertainer at MSG. So the Masters ran long, as live sports often do, but CBS was able to end the green jacket ceremony by 7.30. Perfect. Everything gets bumped a half hour. Billy Joel airs 9.30 to 11.30 Eastern. Local news goes on half an hour late, and we're good. But here's where the real trouble started. The concert actually started at 9.31, after the CBS network had given all of its affiliates the times for their local commercial breaks and when to leave the network, switching back to local news. There used to be a position at every television station called Master Control, which would coordinate when a station was in their local broadcast versus taking the national feed from the network. Now, depending on the market size, ownership situation, and other factors, that position has often been eliminated because of budget cuts. The TV industry is in rough shape. So for some stations, that role is now automated. And for others, it's outsourced to a hub in a city hundreds or thousands of miles away. So even though the concert should have ended at 11.31 or 11.32, the signal went out for everyone to bail out at 11.30. Some stations were powerless to switch back. A few lucky ones had someone in the building to override it. Others were able to speed dial their master control operator in another city to scream, take the network back. Now, CBS seemed to do right after this colossal screwing of the pooch. I'm told an affiliate relations person called each station overnight to find out what happened on their air specifically. Uh, One person I know who talked to her said she just sounded beat up and dejected. After all, If the overnight staff at a station was fielding angry viewer calls, I am sure this poor affiliate person had to hear about it. And after this lit up social media, CBS apologized, put out a statement, and agreed to rebroadcast the concert in its entirety this Friday. No big loss for them. Traditionally, Friday night's a TV wasteland anyway. But if you're DVRing it, you might want to DVR the next program just in case. Here's the larger industry-wide issue. Changes in the media landscape have led to dramatic cuts in television, radio, and even some companies who overinvested in podcasting and got ahead of their skis. Television and radio are having to find new revenue streams and are constantly cutting staff in an effort to stay afloat. That's how these things happen. On the podcasting side, a number of large companies have made cuts, again, after overinvesting in the space. For the major players in podcasting, don't pretend this is a dot-com business in 1998 and go nuts. Invest in good, quality people that drive results and don't throw hundreds of millions of dollars in cash around. And when there are good quarters and bad quarters, don't cut the people that keep the trains on the tracks. The most popular ways to grow a podcast are recommendations of friends and family. So share this episode with someone you know. And for any questions you have about podcasts, find JAG online at jagindetroit.com.